Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Chapter 17 Bathilda's Secret Ladies and Gentlemen, Boys and Girls, gather round and let me take you on a thrilling journey into the heart of danger, mystery, and magic. Today, we delve into a pivotal chapter of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, where our brave heroes, Harry and Hermione, face a chilling encounter that tests their courage and wit. This is Chapter 17, Bathilda's Secret. Harry and Hermione, weary from their relentless quest to defeat Voldemort, find themselves in the quaint, snow-covered village of Godric's Hollow. The air is thick with anticipation and the faint whisper of secrets long buried. They are drawn to this place, hoping to uncover clues that might lead them to the Sword of Gryfinder, an essential weapon in their battle against the Dark Lord. As they walk the quiet streets, their hearts pound with a mix of fear and determination, dot I in the stillness of the night, an old woman appears, shrouded in mystery and the whispers of the past. She is Bathilda Bagshot, a historian of great renown, and her presence stirs a flicker of hope within them. Could she hold the answers they seek? Could she guide them closer to their ultimate goal? With cautious optimism, they follow her, their steps echoing through the deserted village, each one a beat in the drum of their unfolding destiny. Bat Hilda leads them to her home, an ancient house that stands like a sentinel of forgotten times. The exterior is worn, but it exudes an air of history and wisdom. Harry and Hermione exchange glances, their trust in each other unwavering as they cross the threshold into the unknown. The door creaks open and they step inside, their senses on high alert. The atmosphere within is thick with an eerie silence, broken only by the soft rustle of Bathilda's robes. As they move deeper into the house, a sense of unease begins to creep over them. The dimly lit rooms are filled with shadows that dance in the corners of their vision. The air is heavy with the scent of decay and neglect, a stark contrast to the vibrant life they had hoped to find. Bathilda's movements are slow and deliberate, almost mechanical, and her silence is as unsettling as the house itself. Something is not right. Harry's instincts, honed by years of facing danger, prickled at the back of his mind. He glanced at Hermione, whose eyes mirrored his growing concern. They were both on edge, their hands never straying far from their wands, ready to defend themselves at a moment's notice. They had been through too much to let their guard down now. Bathilda's behavior became increasingly bizarre. She seemed disoriented, her eyes vacant and unfocused. She moved with a stiffness that was unnatural, and her responses to their questions were disjointed and incoherent. The house, too, seemed to echo this strangeness. The walls were lined with ancient, crumbling books, and the furniture was draped in dust and cobwebs. It was as if time itself had forgotten this place. Hermione's sharp mind quickly pieced together the inconsistencies. She noticed the odd, almost animalistic movements Bat Hilda made, and the way she seemed to avoid direct eye contact. Harry, too, felt a cold dread settling in his stomach. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up as he watched Bat Hilda closely. This was no ordinary elderly woman, their suspicions grew with each passing moment. Bat Hilda led them up a creaking staircase, the wood groaning under their weight. The hallway at the top was even darker, and the air felt oppressive. Harry and Hermione exchanged a brief, tense look, both of them ready for whatever might come next. As they reached the upper floor, Bat Hilda paused and turned to face them. Her eyes, once vacant, now glinted with a strange intensity. Harry's hand tightened around his wand, his heart pounding in his chest. The air was charged with an unspoken threat, and every instinct screamed at him to be ready. The room they entered was small and cluttered, filled with relics of a bygone era. Bat Hilda gestured for them to sit, but neither Harry nor Hermione moved. They stood their ground, their eyes never leaving Bathilda's face. It was then that the true horror of their situation, began to unfold. Bathilda's form seemed to ripple and distort, her features twisting into something grotesque and unnatural. Harry and Hermione realized too late that they had walked into a trap. The woman before them was not Bathilda Bagshot, it was Voldemort's deadly serpent, Nagini, disguised by dark magic, 
panic surged through them, but their training and instincts took over. Harry's wand was in his hand in an instant, and he cast a protective spell to shield them from Nagini's first strike. The room erupted into chaos as the serpent lunged at them with terrifying speed, her fangs bared and dripping with venom. Hermione's quick thinking and swift spells kept them in the fight. She cast a barrage of defensive and offensive spells, her wand movements precise and powerful. Harry, too, fought with all his might, his determination burning brighter than ever. The battle was fierce, the air filled with the sound of spells clashing and furniture shattering. I in the midst of the chaos, Harry's focus was momentarily broken by a sharp, agonizing pain. His wand, his loyal companion through countless battles, had been struck by one of Nagini's attacks and shattered into pieces. The loss was immediate and devastating, but there was no time to mourn. They had to escape, with a final, desperate push, Harry and Hermione fought their way to the door, their spells creating a path through the wreckage. They burst out of the house and into the cold night, their breaths coming in ragged gasps. The village of Godric's Hollow, once a beacon of hope, now felt like a place of nightmares. Harry clutched the broken pieces of his wand, his heart heavy with the weight of their loss. But even in the face of this setback, he felt a surge of determination. They had survived the encounter with Nagini, and they would continue their fight. The path ahead was uncertain, but their resolve was unshakable. As they disappeared into the night, Harry and Hermione knew that their journey was far from over. The battle against Voldemort would continue, and they would face whatever challenges lay ahead with courage and unwavering spirit. Together, they would fight for a world free from darkness, and they would not rest until their mission was complete. The night was cold, and the air was thick with anticipation, as Harry and Hermione made their way through the snow-covered streets of Godric's Hollow. The quaint village, blanketed in a serene layer of white, seemed like a tranquil oasis amidst the turmoil of their quest. But appearances can be deceiving, and danger lurked just beneath the surface. They had come to Godric's Hollow in search of answers, driven by the hope that Bathilda Bagshot, the venerable historian, could provide vital information about the Sword of Gryfinder. As they wandered through the village, their eyes caught sight of an old woman, frail and bent, who seemed to emerge from the shadows. It was Bathilda, or so they thought. With cautious hope, they approached her, their hearts pounding with a mix of fear and anticipation, Bathilda led them to her home, a decrepit house that stood as a relic of a bygone era. The exterior, worn and crumbling, seemed to whisper secrets of the past. Harry and Hermione exchanged wary glances, their senses on high alert. They stepped inside, the creaking door echoing through the silent night, and found themselves enveloped in an eerie stillness. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the shadows danced menacingly around them, but Hilda moved with a slow, deliberate gait, her eyes vacant and distant. Harry felt a chill run down his spine as he followed her, the nagging feeling that something was not right growing stronger with each step. Hermione, ever perceptive, noticed the strangeness in Bathilda's behavior, the unnatural stiffness, the vacant gaze, the unsettling silence. The house, too, seemed to echo this unease, with its dusty corners and cobweb-covered furniture. Then came the moment that changed everything. Bat Hilda turned to Harry and began to speak. The words that left her lips were not in English, but in Parseltong, the language of snakes. Harry's heart skipped a beat. This was a language he had only heard from the lips of Voldemort and the serpents he commanded. The truth hit him like a bolt of lightning. Bat Hilda was not who she appeared to be. Hermione watched in confusion as Harry responded in the same hissing language the conversation, a private exchange that she could not understand. Her eyes widened with fear and realization, as she saw the dawning horror on Harry's face. This was a trap, a cunning deception woven by their greatest enemy, the facade shattered, and the true horror of their situation was revealed. Bathilda's form began to ripple and distort, her features twisting into something grotesque and terrifying. It was as if a mask had been torn away, exposing the monstrous truth beneath. 
The figure they had followed was not Bathilda Bagshot, but Voldemort's loyal serpent, Nagini, inhabiting the corpse of the real Bathilda. The room seemed to close in around them as the sinister revelation took hold. Nagini, now fully revealed, lunged at them with deadly intent. Her fangs dripped with venom, and her eyes burned with malevolent intelligence. Harry and Hermione were plunged into a fight for their lives, their wands flashing with spells and counterspells. Harry's mind raced as he tried to fend off the ferocious attacks. The realization that they had been lured into this trap by Voldemort himself filled him with a mix of fear and determination. He cast a powerful defensive spell, creating a barrier between them and the deadly serpent. Hermione, her quick reflexes and sharp mind in full gear, joined the battle, her spells precise and unyielding, the fight was fierce and chaotic, the room filled with the sounds of destruction and the acrid smell of burning magic. Nagini's strikes were swift and relentless, but Harry and Hermione fought with everything they had. They knew that their lives depended on their ability to outmaneuver and outfight the deadly serpent. I in the midst of the chaos, Harry's mind flashed with memories of all they had endured and all they still had to do. He knew they could not afford to lose here. With a final, desperate push, they managed to create an opening and made a dash for the door. Bursting out into the cold night, they ran through the snow-covered streets, the adrenaline pumping through their veins. As they fled, the gravity of their narrow escape began to sink in. They had been moments away from death, and yet they had survived. But the victory was bittersweet. The encounter had left them shaken and more aware than ever of the perilous path they walked. The realization that Voldemort was always one step ahead, always laying traps, was a heavy burden to bear. Harry and Hermione paused to catch their breath, their eyes meeting in silent understanding. The road ahead was fraught with danger, but their resolve was unbroken. They would continue to fight, to search for the means to defeat Voldemort, and to protect each other at all costs. The encounter with Nagini was a stark reminder of the darkness they faced, but it also steeled their determination to bring light back into the world, and so, with hearts full of courage and a bond stronger than ever, they set off into the night, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Together, they would continue their quest, driven by the hope of a better future and the unyielding belief that, in the end, good would triumph over evil. Gather round, everyone, as I weave for you a tale of bravery, desperation, and the unyielding will to survive. Our story unfolds in Chapter 17 of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, a chapter fraught with danger and heart-stopping moments. Prepare yourselves for a journey into the very heart of darkness, where every step is a battle for survival and every breath is a victory. I in the eerie silence of Godric's Hollow, Harry and Hermione followed the seemingly frail figure of Bathilda Bagshot, their hearts pounding with a mix of hope and dread. They had come seeking answers, but what they found was a nightmare beyond their darkest fears. As they stepped into Bathilda's decaying house, the air thick with the stench of death and decay, an ease settled over them like a shroud, without warning, the figure of Bathilda transformed, revealing the monstrous form of Nagini, Voldemort's deadly snake. The trap was sprung, and the room exploded into chaos. Nagini lunged at Harry with deadly precision, her fangs gleaming with venom. Harry and Hermione fought back with everything they had, their wands flashing as they cast spell after spell to fend off the ferocious serpent. The struggle was fierce, each moment a desperate dance of survival against the lethal predator, but Nagini was relentless. She moved with terrifying speed, her eyes glowing with malevolent intelligence. Harry and Hermione's spells seemed to barely slow her down. Just as they were beginning to lose hope, an opening appeared. With a final, desperate burst of energy, they managed to break free from Nagini's deadly grasp and fled the house, their hearts pounding with the terror of their narrow escape. As they stumbled into the cold night, the sound of Voldemort's arrival sent a new wave of fear through their hearts. Drawn by Nagini's signal, Voldemort was close, too close. The Dark Lord's presence was palpable, a suffocating aura of malevolence that seemed to close in around them. But Harry and Hermione were determined to survive. 
With a flash of determination, they disapparated just in time, escaping by the narrowest of margins. Their escape was a victory, but it came at a great cost. As they reappeared in the safety of their new location, the gravity of their situation hit them. Harry's wand, his most essential tool and a symbol of his magical prowess, had been broken in the chaos. The loss was a devastating blow, leaving Harry feeling vulnerable and exposed. The physical and emotional toll of their encounter weighed heavily on them. The adrenaline of the fight began to fade, replaced by a bone-deep exhaustion and the haunting realization of how close they had come to death. Harry and Hermione, though shaken, refused to give in to despair. They knew that their journey was far from over, and that the challenges ahead would only grow more daunting. But they also knew that they had each other. Their bond, forged in the crucible of danger and strengthened by every trial, was their greatest asset. Together, they would find a way to overcome every obstacle, to outsmart every foe, and to continue their quest to defeat Voldemort, and so, with steely resolve and hearts full of courage, they pressed on. Every step was a testament to their unbreakable spirit and their unwavering determination to bring light back into the world. They were more than just survivors, they were warriors, bound by a shared destiny and a common purpose. In the face of darkness, they stood united, ready to fight for a future where hope would triumph over fear and love would conquer hate.